How can I control exposure without modifying the aperture? How can I balance between aperture and shutter speed? What is ISO? If you have question how shutter speed and aperture works together, this session will answer that question. Welcome all of you to another session of Nikon DSLR tutorials. In this session, we will be talking about relationship between shutter speed and aperture. Now here is an image that has been shot at 1 by 60th of a second shutter speed and aperture f5.6. Now you can see the overall exposure of the image is pretty decent. As well as you can see the background is slightly defocused. Now if your intention is to bring more background in focus, you have to increase the f number making the aperture further smaller. Once you do that, you will see the image will be underexposed. Reason being, you are cutting the amount of light entering the image sensor. Now, in order to compensate that, the second aspect that you need to change in your camera is the shutter speed. You need to slow down the shutter speed in order to increase the duration of light entering the image sensor. Now, once you slow down the shutter speed to 1 by 15th of a second and keep the same aperture that is f11, you will see you will get more background in focus. That means you will have a greater depth of field and the same exposure as the first image. Now, let us take the same image again. Here you can see an image wherein the background is slightly defocused. Now, if you want to defocus the background furthermore or want a very good shallow depth of field, you need a wider aperture. Now, you need a wider aperture that means you need smaller f number. Smaller f number of f2.8 is good enough to give you a very good shallow depth of field. Hence, at shutter speed 1 by 60th of a second and aperture f2.8, you will see you will get a very good shallow depth of field but the exposure is overexposed. Now, in order to compensate that, what you need to do is you need to increase the shutter speed. Hence, you will see you will get a good shallow depth of field with a properly exposed image. As we have discussed the two components of exposure that is aperture and shutter speed. Now, let us discuss the third component of exposure which is called ISO. ISO is basically responsiveness of sensor towards light. Now, ISO setting can be changed in order to achieve much more brighter output without even changing the shutter speed and aperture. Now, let us see how ISO works. Here you can see an image which is very dark. Now, if you want to achieve an output which is bright without even changing the shutter speed and aperture or without even using a flash, you can actually increase the various numbers of ISO in the camera settings. Now, these number in some cameras starts from 50, in some cameras it starts from 100 and goes up to 3200, 6400 and in high end bodies to 25600. Now, as you increase these numbers, you will see you tend to increase the brightness of the image. Now, as we explained to you earlier, the relationship between shutter speed and aperture and how these two elements can combine together to get you a properly exposed image. Now, if you do not want to change shutter speed and aperture, but yet want a proper exposed image, let us see how ISO helps in that. Now, here is an image that has been shot at 1 by 60th of a second with aperture f5.6. Now, in order to get more background in focus, the element that we will change in our camera would be aperture. So, we increase the f number to f11 so that we get a smaller aperture. Once we do that, the image tends to appear underexposed. Now, in order to balance the exposure, what we will do is we will simply increase the ISO number to 800 so that we get a very good exposed photograph without even changing the shutter speed or aperture. Now, let us see some of the examples of various ISO settings. 
these settings will tell you in what kind of situation what kind of ISO number can be used. In brightly lit situations especially in daylight ISO 100 can give you good output. In shade situation wherein your subject is under the influence of shade ISO 200 will be sufficient enough to give you great output. If you are shooting something that is moving very fast in the outdoor ISO 400 may be sufficient to grab a good exposure. If you are shooting some stage activity or some kind of stage show ISO 800 is sufficient enough to give you great output. Similarly, if you are shooting in a very low lighting situation especially at night ISO 1600 can give you very good output. Now, if you are shooting something that is in very very low lighting situation wherein there is no light then ISO 3200 or more can give you better output. Now, let me just give you a brief idea about relationship between ISO and shutter speed. Higher ISO ensures faster response towards light. Hence, faster shutter speed can be used. Now, why you want to use faster shutter speed? In order to freeze the subject. Now, in order to freeze the subject, once you increase the shutter speed, you will notice that image tends to appear underexposed as shown onto your screen. Now, in order to compensate that underexposure, you need to increase the ISO to correct the exposure. So, you boost the ISO number to get properly exposed image. Now, you might ask me a question, why not we use higher ISO always? To answer that, lowest possible ISO given by your camera is the best output in that particular ISO. That means, if you are shooting at ISO 100 or 200, the image quality that comes in that particular ISO would be far more better than the ISO used 3200 or 6400. Now, at 3200 or 6400, you might see noise and grains on the image. Now, to make you understand in a better way, let us have a look at various images shot at different ISO settings. ISO 200, ISO 400, till ISO 1600, you will not see any kind of noise or grains on the image. That means, the image quality is simply impeccable. But when you increase the ISO to 3200 or to further 6400, you might see little bit of grains and noise on the image. If you intend to print an image, canvas size and exhibit your image, we recommend to you to shoot at the lowest ISO possible. We thank you for watching this session of Nikon DSLR tutorial and we hope you enjoyed the session. In the next session, we will be talking about various exposure control modes like aperture priority auto, shutter priority auto and programmed auto. Until next time, this is your Nikon buddy Abhishek Singh signing off.